This is Action News Midday with Robbie Timmons, Eric Smith, and Detroit's First News team. Good afternoon. In the news at this hour in Washington, it will be jail time for the mayor. A federal judge this morning sentenced Marion Barry to a six-month prison term and a $5,000 fine following his misdemeanor cocaine conviction. Barry had pleaded for a sentence of community service, but federal judge Thomas Penfield Jackson said the mayor had abused his office and the collective trust of the community. Barry, who spoke in court for the very first time in the 10-month legal ordeal, said he was truly remorseful and asked for leniency. Barry was convicted on the one charge in August after a federal jury acquitted him on another and deadlocked on an additional 12 counts. The Federal Prison Bureau will decide where Barry will spend his jail time. The mayor's attorneys will not say if they will appeal. And by the way, Barbara Walters will have an extensive interview with Mary and Barry tonight on 2020, which can be seen right here on Channel 7 at 10 o'clock. Okay. Well, it has come down to the word of a six-year-old girl versus that of her school teacher in the trial of Almont school teacher John Skiba. Closing arguments given this morning in Lapeer as two very different pictures were painted of the popular gym teacher accused of molesting one of his young students. Channel 7's Ken Ford has been covering the trial, and he joins us now in this live-action camera report. Ken, where do things stand? Well, Eric, there have been few witnesses in this case. Of course, it's been a relatively brief trial, and, uh, and uh, there's been no real physical evidence presented. And yet the closing arguments have taken all morning. They ended just moments ago, as a matter of fact. It, it appears as though both attorneys are feeling that uh, the jury may yet be somewhat undecided, and they're taking this final opportunity to perhaps win their case. This seems like a nice time to me. But he's not on trial here. For being a nice guy. He's on trial for criminal sexual conduct in the second degree. And that is how the prosecutor began his closing remarks, reminding the jury that even a well-liked man like Jonathan Skiba can be a child molester as charged. Don't be taken in by this nice guy, he said. The proofs are in, the evidence has been given to you. The testimony in this courtroom and the exhibits introduced are the evidence that you have to decide this case on. Now remember, the child is the prosecution's only real witness, critical. So her testimony has been contradictory. At one point earlier when she was on the stand, she could not remember anything about the incident. Later, it all came back to her. The prosecutor told the jury, remember, this is just a child and she was afraid. But the defense, concentrating on the child's importance, reminded the jury, this child has great difficulty separating truth from fantasy. Remember that when you're deciding. I'm not saying that who fan is a I would never say that. I think it's very fair and reasonable to say that what she has said is not true. That that is very different. And I think I have to support point out. Well, closing arguments are now over. As you can see back here, the doors to the courtroom are closed, and the judge at this very moment is giving the jury its instructions and will send them out. How long will the jury deliberation take? Well, I asked John Skiba just uh, five minutes ago what he thought about that. He said he's not ready to guess, but he did say that his attorney, his defense attorney, is making a prediction anywhere from 15 minutes to four days. We'll be standing by. Reporting live via New Star 7 satellite, I'm Ken Ford, Channel 7 Action News. Back to Eric. All right, thank you, Ken. John Skiba still faces 11 other charges of indecent exposure. Robbie? Serious questions are being raised on whether six-year-old Antoine Dumas might still be alive today if a 911 emergency operator had not told Antoine's sister to hang up the telephone. According to 911 tapes obtained by the Detroit News, Antoine's sister called for help while Antoine was still apparently alive, saying that her brother was being murdered but she was told to hang up the phone by the operator. Little Antoine had been raised by his uncle since birth and apparently pleaded with the courts to let him stay with his uncle, but then he was turned over to his natural mother. He then died of child abuse. Channel 7 Cheryl Choden has more on the story. The beating death of six-year-old Antoine Dumas raised a lot of questions about co-limited guardianship, about the rights of natural parents who give up children at birth. But now the tragic death of the little boy has raised serious concerns about Detroit's 911 system. That's because it's been revealed that Antoine's seven-year-old sister, Aisha, called 911 the day her brother was beaten with an extension cord and told an operator, my brother's been murdered. According to the tape-recorded conversation, the operator told the little girl to get off the phone, get off the phone right now. 
now. Five minutes later, Antoine's mother called again. An ambulance was dispatched. It was too late. The Wayne County prosecutor says the operator's behavior was inexcusable. Police officials say corrective action has been taken. They would not be specific. No one knows whether five minutes would have made a difference. Police officials who handle the 911 operators were not available for comment this morning. The union which represents the operators would only say that if the operator is upset about the action taken, she can file a grievance. At police headquarters, I'm Cheryl Choden, Channel 7 Action News reporting. It was just yesterday that Antoine's mother and her husband pled guilty to a reduced charge of manslaughter in Antoine's death. Three former Northwest Airline pilots are in a Minnesota courtroom at this hour waiting for a judge to sentence them. The trio was convicted of flying while drunk. The incident happened in March after the men went drinking at a Fargo, North Dakota lounge and then flew the 727 jet and its passengers to Minneapolis. It is the first time airline pilots have been prosecuted under the federal law that prohibits flying while under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Well, congressional leaders are once again putting the finishing touches on a deficit-reducing budget. Democratic Senator Lloyd Benson and Congressman Dan Rostenkowski worked this morning to reach a final agreement on the Medicare cuts. So far, negotiators have hammered out a rough framework that raises gasoline and excise taxes. The Democrats have begun circulating figures on how the tax changes will affect most Americans. Under the plan, about 40% of the people, those with family incomes below $20,000, would see their federal taxes actually drop an average 2%. Another 55% would get a 2% tax increase. And only the top 5%, those with family incomes over $100,000 a year, would see their federal taxes increase more than 6%. The administration has warned Congress against any last-minute surprises in the deal. We are serious about it not being over till it's over, until the president gets a chance to see and hear from uh, everybody that's involved in working out the details, what's in the package. He obviously can't agree to it. Michigan Democrats are grudgingly accepting the deal, but some Republicans still aren't buying it. Representative R William Broomfield says it's simply too heavy on taxes and too light on spending cuts. The House is expected to vote on the measure today. Well, when shoppers go to the grocery store, they wage their own personal budget battle. Now, an elderly Michigan woman who claims she was shortchanged by Farmer Jack is taking her fight to court. Evelyn Hoff of Madison Heights is suing the grocery giant over a claim that she was overcharged seven cents for a spaghetti dinner, and the store refused to properly repay her. Under a little-used Michigan law called item pricing, Hoff was entitled to a $1 refund because she was overcharged. The supermarket chain has given her the seven cents back and offered a $25 gift certificate as well. Ms. Hoff, however, refused after picking up the backing of as many as 20 consumer groups, decided to push her lawsuit. She goes to court next month seeking about $250 in damages. There is new indication this midday that the United States may, just may, invade Iraq. There are several diplomatic sources who claim that Secretary of State James Baker will soon go to Saudi Arabia to get permission to launch a military strike against the Saddam Hussein regime. A State Department spokesman says Baker wants to go there but would not say why. It was just yesterday that Defense Secretary Dick Cheney left open the door to a bigger troop buildup in the Persian Gulf. And meanwhile, U.S. Energy Administrator Calvin Kent has told a Senate panel to expect gasoline prices to hover between $1.30 and $1.62 a gallon for the next year. And that is if war does not break out. And coming up on Action News, doctors think they may have found a drug that may cure baldness. We'll have details for you. And we'll be telling you how you can keep uh, warm this winter without spending a fortune. That'd be nice. We're going to need that advice here yeah. pretty soon, yeah. too, aren't we? <laughs> That's good news. <laughs> Sunshine out there for the afternoon. Pretty good-looking weekend weather-wise coming up. We'll be right back with that forecast. That case involves surgery to the lung of a young child, and unfortunately, the doctor made a mistake. After getting involved with that case and speaking with some of the leading experts from around the country, it turned out that more than the lung was involved. It involved his speech. It involved his development. It involved his walking. As a result of that kind of team approach, we were able to make a settlement for that child that will take care of him and will take care of his family for the rest of their lives.
vegetables. Anyone can freeze them in a block, Sprout. The Green Giant knows better. He freezes his plain Harvest Fresh vegetables in a vacuum-sealed pouch to preserve their natural flavor. That's why they taste so fresh. Harvest Fresh vegetables are the only plain vegetables frozen in a vacuum-sealed pouch. I feel like such a blockhead. Ho, ho, ho. Green Giant. I'm Joe Montana. A few months ago, I challenged any Diet Coke celebrity to come on TV and take a blind taste test against Diet Pepsi. But no one had the courage to show up, so I'm going to take the test myself. Okay, thanks. Okay, who's the wise guy? I don't know, but I got the right one, baby. <laughs> Introducing Michigan's newest midsize, a lightweight 20-ounce 8-pack, now featured at an A&P near you. We had a $45 billion trade deficit with Japan, and yet we have 50,000 troops in Japan protecting Japanese interests at the cost of roughly $5 billion a year. It makes no sense. That's why David Bonnier led the fight to pass the Bonnier Amendment an amendment to force the Japanese to pay their fair share for their defense. David Bonnier for Congress, because it's time to take care of our own. Well, the days will appear to get shorter next week because daylight saving time comes to an end this weekend. Just remember to set your clocks, watches, and VCR times back one hour before you go to bed Saturday night or at 2 o'clock in the morning if you happen to be up then. You'll gain an hour of sleep that you lost in the spring. Remember, fall back one hour Saturday night at 2. 8,000 clocks we have to do. I like that. You <laughs> added VCRs. Yeah. That's right. I always forget that, don't you? <laughs> That's right. Oh, my, how we are changing. Let's take a look at the weather, which is changing very rapidly out there. We're looking for some warm temperatures to move in here for the afternoon hours. Really a good-looking weekend coming up as far as uh, mild conditions. 40 degrees in Metropolitan Airport. That's the current reading. Winds out of the northwest at 10. The pressure rising. The humidity at 57%. Now, let's take a look at the satellite shot. Not a whole lot going on. That's a good indication of some fair weather sliding in here. This is uh, Michigan, southeast Michigan, in the Detroit area. Just a little bit of cloud cover back out around Sioux City, Iowa, and some going on in the UP, and that's about it. That's about all that's going on around the Great Lakes region at the present time. Here's what we're looking at as far as the systems. These two high-pressure centers right here have their ridges running in between them, and that puts us in the sunshine. They're going to hang in here for the daylight hours with the rain going to the east. But then for tonight, you'll see them begin to fizzle out and kind of slide to the east. This is a big wave of some warmer air that's just going to kind of come in out of the west right there. It'll meet with a little humidity to the north of us, touching off some showers in northern Minnesota. Uh, western sections of the UP, northern Wisconsin. Still this activity going here, and here's what's left of that high pressure center dropping all the way down around uh, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia, and then it will eventually fizzle out. So for Saturday, here's what we're looking at. It gets close. Warm air slides up into the Detroit area. That should kick us up to 60 degrees. This is the leading edge of that wave of colder air. Coming in back off the west is another wave uh, of colder. Did I say this was colder? This is the warmer stuff. This is the colder stuff, and you can see that with the snow that may hook in behind that in Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, and portions of the UP on Saturday. But this is us right there. We're looking for sunshine in here on Saturday. It looks like most of this precipitation here is going to take off and go that way, heading on into Ontario. This activity right here is going to go to the south of us, so we're going to split those two systems. Just a couple of clouds out there at the present time. That's it. Temperatures in the 30s and in the 40s. Let's take a look at the, what's going on in the Mideast. Still cooling off there. Readings 95 in northern Saudi, 97 in the Persian Gulf, and 95 degrees in the Gulf of Oman. Now, forecast for the Detroit area for this afternoon. Here's what we're looking at. Sunshine out there. Temperatures on the mild side. Maybe a little cool for this time of year. 50 degrees for a high. Variable winds. For tonight... Uh, cold temperatures, not as cold as last night. The lows 36 to 38 degrees. And then for tomorrow on a Saturday, a very nice day. Sunshine, warmer. The high temperatures on Saturday from 60 to 62 degrees. And it looks like on Sunday we'll have just about the same thing. Temperatures uh, in the upper 50s to near 60. Thank you. Toss the coat in here to remind me, to remind you that we have a project going on called Coats for Kids. We have many children in the Detroit area who do not have warm enough coats to go to school. If you have coats that your kids have outgrown or coats hanging in the closet that you don't know what to do with, boy, we could use them. Please call 964-KIDS and they'll tell you where to take your coats to one hour martinizing and drop them off there. Or 15, not 50, $15 will buy a new coat 
for a child in the Detroit area. Good one investment. Five. One five. Boy. One five. Good deal. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Rob. Well, here's a question for you. How do you make more than $55,000 a second? Well, all you have to do is be Buster Douglas and lose your heavyweight boxing title. That's how much he earned in Vegas last night after getting belted with a stiff uppercut from Evander Holyfield. Just one minute and ten seconds. Count those expensive seconds into the third round of their title bout. I felt that um, even going into the fight, I would be the champion of the world. I just knew I just had to go out and uh, fight a good fight. I overextended myself and got caught with a good shot. And I take nothing against, nothing away from Van. He's a tremendous fighter and uh, seems to have a, a bright future as a champion. Holyfield took a home a lot less money than Mr. Douglas, just over $18,000 a second. Elsewhere in sports today, the Red Wings will play host to the Minnesota North Stars tonight down at Joe Louis Arena. Wow. Why do the payoffs in boxing seem so out of the ordinary? Uh, yeah, <laughs> Don't know, yeah. yeah. It seems unbalanced, yeah. doesn't it, some way? It's an awful lot of money. Strange. For very little work. Well, while we ponder that, coming yeah. up, we'll have a sneak preview of a special magazine that looks at women in the 90s. And we'll explain why hundreds of Detroit area workers are worried about their jobs today. Those stories, lots more coming up. Action News Midday. A.L. Price permanently cuts prices in every aisle. Like Chicken of the Sea tuna, two cans, only 99 cents. You'll find some of America's lowest prices every day at A.L. Price. Recently, a dear sweet lady said she hasn't shopped Meyer because it's too overwhelming. But my dear, consider the alternative. You could spend hours driving from store to store to find everything you need when you can find it all at Meyer. Celebrate Harvest Moon Festival with La Choy Buy Pack Dinners 209, plus all Fujifilm in stock, 50 cents off with coupon from the One Stop Shopping Guide. So, dear lady, shop Meyer. You'll be overwhelmed, all right, by the time and money you save. Meyer, the store built on common sense. Metro 25 presents Budweiser Fight Night at the Palace. On Tuesday, October 30th, the USBA Championship title goes up for grabs. Also featuring undefeated junior welterweight Oba Carr in his first ever 10-round fight versus Anthony Stevens, plus Leon Barber and much more. Tickets are available at the Palace Box Office, all Ticketmaster locations, and all great stuff stores are charged by phone. Fight fans, for all you do, this Bud's for you. Do we all pay our share, or do the big interests continue to get tax breaks? That's been the debate in Lansing, too. In the last 10 years, John Engler has voted to protect tax breaks for insurance companies, banks, and big oil. This year, he actually tried to get special tax breaks for people who inherit millions of dollars. Now John Engler's proposing $4 billion in new spending. Who do you think will pay for that? John Engler's special interest friends, or you? Coming on video cassette. <laughs> Mel. You're going to pay for that one. Plus, Goldie. <laughs> equals action. You got to break my damn <laughs> Bird on a wire. Bring it home on video cassette starting November 15th. The jobs of some 3,000 local Unisys workers are apparently in jeopardy today. The company planning a nationwide cutback of 8,000 employees because of massive money problems. In just the third quarter alone, Unisys lost more than $350 million. Chairman Michael Blumenthal has resigned, but a Unisys spokesperson could not tell Action News how many local jobs could be lost. Well, think about this statement. Being a woman is harder than being a man. That's what Americans, both men and women, apparently think. In a special issue of Time magazine to be distributed Monday, a new survey shows that 59% of women and 65% of men think men have it easier. Part of the difficulty with women's lives is too much pressure to juggle work and family. More than four out of five young Americans think it is very difficult or somewhat difficult to have a career, marriage, and children. And then there were some surprises. Some of the surprises had to do with men. We found, for instance, that uh, young men aged 18 to 24, uh, it, about when we polled them, we found that about half of them said that they would be interested in taking some time away from their careers and staying home to help raise the kids. That, that really was surprising. Wallace said she does not expect to be doing a special women's edition 10 years from now. She says that by then, the lives and concerns of men and women will be much more similar. 
Uh, when Action News Midday continues, we'll tell you about a new drug that might, might mean a full head of hair for men who are bald. You don't have to worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> Not yet, but by the We're time this drug's there. ready, yeah. <laughs> we'll have that story in just a moment. <laughs> These lines on my forehead, they tell the world I'm a deep thinker. While these lines around my mouth show my sense of humor. And the lines around my eyes, I earned them raising three daughters. But these lines got to go. New Vision's exclusive Invisifocal lens. Bifocals without the line. Now buy complete prescription glasses and get a second pair free. I'm proud of my lines. I just didn't need two more. They're back and more thrilling than ever. Brian Voitano and Katarina Vance together again in Skating 2. A totally new production for the 90s. Skating 2. Featuring 15 world and Olympic ice skating champions. Underhill and Martini. Blumberg and Seeper. Belova and Vasilia. And Gary Beacom. Dazzling. Exciting. It's all new. Brian Voitano and Katarina Vance. And their cast of Olympic champions. November 28th at Joe Louis Arena. Tickets to the box office, Ticketmaster, or charge by phone. Cable TV. If you miss a day, you miss a lot. Cable's hot this fall. Call 1-800-CABLE-ME to get installation for just $5. See continuous news, music, and more 24 hours a day. Plus, receive two premium channels for the price of one for 30 days. Enjoy the fabulous Baker Boys on HBO or Black Rain on Cinemax. Don't miss another day. Call 1-800-CABLE-ME to get cable TV. If you could design the perfect doctor's office, your doctor would work side by side with top specialists. Doctors for every member of the family. All affiliated with a nationally recognized academic medical center. You'd have x-rays, a lab, physical therapy, right on site. Put it all close to home, the perfect doctor's office. A DMC healthcare center, world class, neighbor close. Call 1-800-DMC-0400 for an appointment. DMC healthcare centers, designed for you. Millions of people concerned about losing their hair, and a cure for baldness may be about 10 years away. For millions of men all over the world, losing hair is a major concern, but a British researcher claims he and others have now been able to grow human hair in a test tube for the very first time. The next step for the scientists, though, is to find out why it stops growing. They claim they will have the answer by the turn of the century. Hmm. Well, okay. <laughs> Sales of wood-burning stoves are certainly sizzling this season. The, uh, fueled in part, I guess, by the Persian Gulf crisis and fears of oil shortages this winter. As Ron Tank reports now, today's wood stoves are more fuel-efficient, really, than ever before. Before the days of central heat, this was a common sight, the lighting of a wood stove to take the chill off a winter morning. But for Kim Reardon, heating with a wood stove still makes sense in the 90s. Our basic needs really haven't changed. I mean, we all still need to heat our homes in some way or another. And it's a pretty natural source of, or means of, of heating a home. Rising fuel costs and the uncertain future of oil supplies from the Middle East have rekindled an interest in wood stoves. And consumers today will find a whole new generation of stoves on the market. Stoves that are better looking, more fuel efficient, and less polluting than ever before. The new stoves come in a variety of colors, shapes, and sizes. But the most important new feature to look for is this tag. It certifies that the stove meets the strict new Phase 2 anti-pollution standards set by the EPA. The new models can be freestanding or inserted into an existing fireplace, where the improvement on heat efficiency can be dramatic. We're getting up in the 70% range efficiency compared to minus 10 to 10% on a regular wood-burning fireplace. The stove in the highest efficiency range is the pellet stove, a relatively new design that burns small wood pellets made from sawdust. A thermostat controls an auger that feeds the pellets into the flame, and a fan distributes the heated air. And they are even cleaner burning than the regular wood stoves. They're up to an 80% efficiency range, which means practically zero pollution out. One problem, the auger and fan do require electricity, so if the lights go out, so does your heat. When shopping for any wood stove, take into consideration the availability and cost of wood in your area, the amount of space you need to heat, and any zoning restrictions. Then get ready to enjoy a cozy winter with a traditional source of heat that's making a hot comeback. This is Ron Tank reporting. We're going to need this. Yeah, we are. I just got a fuel bill yesterday. Uh oh. <laughs> oh. That'll make you think about it. Action News Midday will continue. Stay with us. 
The injury, or even worse, the death of a child brings great sorrow and heartbreak to a family. Michigan law provides money compensation for the injury or death of a child caused by slip and fall, dog bite, automobile accident, product failure, or medical malpractice. If your child has been injured, call the law offices of Lee Steinberg, 352-7777, for free phone advice. If you're afraid you can't afford to call an attorney but want to help your child, remember, you call Lee free and there is no fee unless there is a recovery. Call Lee Steinberg, 352-7777. Call Lee, 352-7777. Get together for a harvest of savings on the best of everything fresh. This week, Western grain-fed boneless beef chuck roast is $1.78 per pound. Fresh Michigan cooking onions are 29 cents. Assorted varieties of Gorton's frozen fish sticks and batter fillets are $2.88. And regular or light Hillshire Farm smoked or Polish sausage are $1.68. It's harvest time at some farms and stores. Harvest of savings. You love shrimp? Great shrimp! Check this! For great dinners and big more, featuring deep fried shrimp. Like? Shrimp and cod. Just $5.99. Shrimp and chicken. $5.99. Shrimp and surprise. More shrimp. That's only $5.99 too. And shrimp and steak. A choice sirloin steak. For great dinners and big more, featuring deep fried shrimp. Yeah! If you love shrimp. Great shrimp. Check this! There's more to love. There's more to love. There's more to love. Well, the border police in Arizona got a little more than they bargained for during a news conference yesterday. They were showing off the big haul from a drug bust along the Mexican border. Two tons of cocaine and lots of electronic equipment, including a walkie-talkie telephone. Well, during the news conference, one of those walkie-talkie phones rang. An officer excused himself. He took the call, came back. Afterward, he would only say that the mystery caller had helped the case. Robbie? Probably wrote down who the call is for. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up tonight on 7's Action News at 5 and 6, a political ad, you've probably seen this, for a state Supreme Court candidate in which you see a man shoot a woman before your eyes is raising questions about the violent nature of some advertising. We'll talk to the candidate about that controversy. And also a man accused of hiring someone to kill his wife faces his wife in court today. Join us for Action News at 5 and 6. And actually, uh afternoon. Chilly afternoon out there, but a good looking weekend with some sunshine. Get out there and enjoy it. We'll see you at five. Okay, I'll Editorial. Here is Channel 7 editorial director, Chuck Stokes. A lot of people said it was impossible. You can't put a daycare center smack dab in the middle of hustling, bustling downtown Detroit. That's crazy. Well, Think again and look around. This, we hope, is the wave of the future. It's called Kid Space, a fully licensed child development center for infants, toddlers, and preschoolers. What's unique is the setting. This is the old Wayne County building. A big cannon used to sit here. It's gone now. In its place is a playground for kids. A true sign that America is drastically changing. By 1995, two out of every three preschool children will have mothers that work outside the home. Wayne County jumped on the daycare baby buggy early. Last winter, it wisely invested $390,000 to turn a portion of this historic structure into a preschool learning center. Now, Wayne County is recouping $100,000 a year in worker productivity. Some of the other payoffs are attracting and maintaining good employees and a decrease in absenteeism. In our opinion, Kid Space is an overwhelming success, thanks in part to not only women, but to men with a sense of vision. With invaluable assistance from the Merrill Palmer Institute, they have squeezed love, learning, and a little fun into the workplace. Don't believe it? See for yourself. Tonight at 9.30, Channel 7 will broadcast the making of Kid Space, a documentary by Academy Award-winning producer Sue Marks. The story she has captured on film will hopefully inspire a generation of employers to start placing child care at the very top of their agenda. Tune in to what we believe is one of the most important issues of the future, our children. I'm Chuck Stokes. Stand up. Tell us your opinion. Write Stand Up, Box 7, Detroit 48231. We've loaded up new Great Editions brownies with lots of great extras, like sprinkles and frosting in our Funfetti Frosted Brownies. Mm, lots of them. 
Select California walnut in our walnut brownies. Lots of them. And yummy chocolate morsels in our double chocolate brownies. Lots of them. So, if you like your brownies loaded, you'll love new Great Editions brownies. Oh, nothing says loving like my Great Editions brownies. I used to work on the assembly line in this plant. We made some of the best cars in the world. But the plant's gone now, and so are the jobs. Too often, we're shipping opportunities overseas and selling our future for short-term profits. It's time to look after our own and get back to the fundamentals a good education and good-paying jobs, priorities that put people first and keep America number one. Carl Levin, standing up for America's future. Kmart has changed a lot since we opened our first store 27 years ago. But nothing we have ever done compares to the changes we're making now. We're changing the way Kmart looks, feels, and acts. With more brand names, new store designs, and improved service. What about cosmetics? We understand you want to feel good about where you shop. So we're doing everything it takes to make you love your new Kmart. Visit the Haunted Holly Hotel Wednesday morning at 9 on 7.